Watch and burn. Hey everyone, so tonight I want to discuss um, Lois Weber's 1921 film, and that is The Blot. Now, this movie has done a number of things for me that I, I didn't really think would happen in a film in the 20s. Mainly, it being that it, it brings out the sort of rich student sort of troublemaker stereotype that would be ever so popular in film from this point right up until 2023, where we are now. I am getting a little ahead of myself, I just realized. I probably should say what the film is about before I start talking about what the characters get up to. But what the story is about is about a professor named Andrew Griggs, who is broke beyond. He's like living in complete abject poverty. And he's the one that's teaching at this prestigious university where Lewis Calhoun again and all of his rich friends constantly fuck with him when he's trying to teach their class. Like rich sort of crappy jock stereotype characters have always done. And I thought this was really cool because this is a movie from 1921 and yet here is that sort of rich student fucking with the teacher thing that has been ever so prevalent in movies, especially in the 1980s. So I thought that was really cool again that there's Lois Weber sort of innovating once again because this woman was already known for, for messing with sound and lighting effects before sound was used, before sync sound was a thing in the talkies it happened, as well as not a lot of directors at that point were messing with lighting effects and attempting to do things like that. So it's cool again. And then to have the writing be about, you know, again, the, the, the class system, the differences in schools between the rich and the poor, usually movies like this do center around students and they leave the professors and the, the faculty out of it. But this is directly about how poor the professor is and how he has to tolerate the rich students around him and how his wife wants more. And of course, at home, he lives next door to what they refer to as a foreign born rich shoemaker. So they're not happy about this because they live in complete poverty and their complete next door neighbor, like the house right next to them, they're loaded and they have a car and they have several kids that they can afford and they have as much food as they want and they always seem to be laughing. And at one point, uh, Professor Griggs' wife notices that one of the, the, the rich people next door, their, one of their toddlers is playing in a pair of $20 shoes because who cares, right? They have several pairs of $20 shoes because they're rich. And then, of course, the camera cuts to her looking down at her shoes, which are falling apart. And she, you can see that Professor Griggs' wife is really starting to struggle with this and that she's not able to put up with it for much longer. And then what happens is, is her daughter, uh, played by Claire Windsor, of course, um, she, Amelia, she gets sick and the doctor says, oh, she's just a little undernourished, you know, give her like a hearty meal, give her some chicken, some beef or something. And that's a problem in the Greg's household. They don't have a lot of meat because they don't have any money. And so Mrs. Griggs attempts to buy some chicken on credit and she can't. So when she returns home, of course, her rich foreign born neighbors next door are cooking two or three chickens at once. And she gives in to temptation and grabs one of the chickens only to have Amelia, who's sick upstairs in bed, witness the theft and kind of freaks right out. And like, oh my God, my mom's stealing food. And then of course, the mom has a change of heart and she decides to give it back before anybody you know, notices it's gone. But it's too late because Amelia already thinks her mom is a thief so she won't eat the food. That the food was given to her by one of the rich students who likes Amelia. So the whole time she thinks the chicken's stolen and she needs to eat the chicken because she's kind of malnourished and she won't eat the chicken because she thinks her mom took it from the rich neighbor, but really it was donated by one of the rich kids at school that like her. And I don't know, this was, this was a really big film. Whereas I found with uh, other films from this period, they're, they're, they, I don't know, they're a little softer maybe, or they're a little more, um, vague in their intentions as far as what the point is they're trying to get across. This movie makes a very, like, definitely draws a line in the sand discussing how, you know, the, the class system isn't necessarily the best thing in the world because you have people starving right next to people who have endless wealth. I mean, Amelia needs food. She's malnourished, so you know she's not eating much. And then there's the rich people next door eating as much as they want. And it's... 
kind of sad that we're still addressing these issues here in 2023. You consider with the wealth that we have available to us, Canada in particular, if I'm not mistaken, we're third in the world for natural resources sitting in around 19 trillion and change. And yet we still have a lot of poor people in this country. We don't have any dental care, which is really weird because if you break both your legs and you have a heart attack all at the same time and it, it would cost a quarter of a million dollars or whatever, it's, that's what OHIP's for. It's covered. But if you have a nasty infection in your tooth that's going to spread to your brain, tough. You got to pay to have that sucker taken out. And again, with as much money as this country has, I find that to be kind of alarming. So I thought that was cool about this movie, especially a movie touching on such serious topics this early on in the history of Hollywood. And then as far as having the sort of rich student fucking with the, the faculty, I, I love that because so many movies that I watched growing up sort of played on those stereotypes, like, like the Revenge of the Nerds movies where the rich jock prep students are fucking with the nerds and how like, actually, for some reason, I keep thinking a summer school with Kirstie Alley and that has absolutely nothing to do with any of this. I just really liked that movie. I absolutely love Summer School with Kirstie Alley. That, in that movie is so much fun, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fucking blot directed by Lois Weber back from 1921. But I think I'm going to stop because I said everything I want to say. So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I discussed Lois Weber's absolutely brilliant 1921 film, The Blot. Like always, if you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But most importantly, please don't forget that the world is a better place because you are in it. And I will talk to you very soon because these things are coming out daily. Of course, these videos won't be seen until sometime in February or March 2024 forward. But yeah, so I'll see you in a year. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.